great as always. Now I'm going to bring on Wolf Lazama. What's up, man? What's up, bro? How you doing? Good, man. Wolf has right the on. best name in 49ers content creation. <laughs> I mean, that's I was I was going to say shout out Mariah for uh for having a show while everybody else is smoking the devil's lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> No comment. No comment. All right, man. I'm gonna ask <laughs> allegedly. You, uh, allegedly. I'm gonna yeah. ask you um to help me, man. I got a bunch of Twitter questions. I wanna go right. through those with you if you're cool with that. Oh yeah. All right. Salt Witta at Salt Witta asks bigger threat to the 49ers passing defense. C D Lamb or Dalton Schultz? What do you think? Oh man. Um I think the threat is uh, going to be pressure, bro. Honestly, um, our secondary has has been giving up yardage to to a lot of different types of receivers, man. Especially mm -hmm. number one receivers, that would be CD Lamb. So I would assume he'll get off the most. But um, I think we just we just got to play disciplined football on the defensive side and mix things up a little bit more to help the back end, uh, because you know our number one corner is showing that he's getting. Um, he's, oh, he's getting beat up on, on the back end a little bit. Yeah. So dominate for Niner says Schultz for sure. I think Schultz had a good game. He hasn't had like, he's not been like dominant all season, but he had a great game last week. Uh, I think CD lamb is definitely a, a threat as well. And like you said, the key is I've been saying this too much all week long when the 49ers get pressure on the quarterback, I'm not worried about anybody, but honestly. It, it's the pressure yeah. on the quarterback, which is the key. And when they don't, it's a whole different ballgame because you're asking the defensive backs to do a lot more than you would otherwise. Um, so I, I agree with you, man. It, like C.D. Lamb, Dalton Schultz, neither one of them scare me in particular uh, if we're getting uh, pressure on the quarterback. Uh, when that when that falls off, it's a different ballgame. So that, that to me is, is the key, man. You agree with that? Yeah, that and not only that, I think we've seen like against the Chiefs was a great indicator of um, just, you know, schematically scheming a different guys open. If Mike McCarthy is able to do that, which I I, I think he'll get a couple guys open, but it's not going to happen very often like uh, Andy Reid did. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's more about that more than the one on one coverage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Swan's talking about Seaboard got beat on a 50 yard bomb. That was a great catch. Yeah, was that even a catch? Are you talking about the one that hit the ground? Or are you talking about the yeah, other one? I'm not sure. I don't remember specifically which what you're about referring to. DK Say Metcalf over the top. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. got beat over the top. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was a good catch. All right, cool, man. Well, yeah. Chris J1914 asks, what matchup regarding the Niners offense are you concerned about when it comes to the Cowboys defense? Oh, man. Matchup for the 49ers offense. Um, Is there a defensive player on the Cowboys, basically, that scares you that might, you know, take a 49er offensive player out of the game? I don't. The 49ers are too versatile, but I, I think it's just going to be um, <clears throat> disguising coverages and trying to get Brock Purdy to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like dropping Micah Parsons back into coverage when you have him giving a blitz look. Uh, stuff like that. So I'm more worried when it comes to the offense about um, just Brock Purdy. I hope he can still continue to play mistake free football for the most part. Um, I know people want to talk about his near misses, his near interce interceptions. Uh, so I just hope he can protect the ball and uh, distribute the ball well. Um, hopefully the O line does pretty damn good, you know, um, especially McGlinchey. I think all eyes are going to be on him. Um, being that this is a very important game. Uh, he's been on the up, I think, a little bit these past few weeks. But, um, yeah, I think Brock Purdy and Mike McGlinchey are going to be the big uh, – two big keys to this offense having success this week. Yeah, I think those are good points. You know, how does how does Brock respond to a, a, a pretty good defense? Uh, and then how does Mike McGlinchey hold up against Parsons? You know, I'm not really worried about Trent Williams and Parsons. Um but, you know, and Mike McGinchy, to his credit, has played decent. You know, people pick on him a lot. 
you know, as long as he, you know, he's done a good job the last couple of weeks of not getting holding penalties. That was yeah. his biggest problem throughout <laughs> the season, you know. Yeah. And uh, that does concern me a little bit with Michael Parsons <clears throat> coming off the edge against McGlinchey. And Parsons does roam from side to side. So uh, that's something to look for, for sure. I think that would be uh, – I, I would have the same answer to you in regards to that. So on the flip side, same guy, uh, Chris J. 1914 asks – Given the Niners personnel on offense, what areas personnel would you exploit on the Cowboys defense? So um, where, where are the weaknesses mm. on the defense? <laughs> oh, man. Um, outside of number one receiver, I would uh, aim at their corners, but especially their middle linebackers. Mm -hmm. I really want to see if the 49ers can uh, run at Micah Parsons and expose him, getting get him a little bit tired, kind of like, uh, you know, other offenses have tried to do to Bosa mm -hmm. throughout the last couple of years um gas him out a little bit uh but i would really pick on the linebackers um micah parsons being the focal point of that um yeah. i think getting kittle you know getting kittle some touches and just doing the the opposing defense dirty with kittle man is gonna take uh the wind right out of them and uh make some big plays for kittle and brock purdy and get get brock purdy some momentum as well yeah and i i, I saw a statistic yesterday uh that the Cowboys are one of the worst in the NFL at defending wide receiver two. And although yeah. Brandon Ayuk is really wide receiver one, I think what that means though is they'll probably be guarding Debo with their number one corner. And they'll, for whatever reason, that people still guard Debo with their, their number one corner. I, I wouldn't personally, I'd be guarding Brandon Ayuk with my number one corner. And you see it sometimes, yeah, uh, particularly when Debo wasn't in. But if they have their top corner on Debo, then I would look for Ayuk to go off because I think Cowboys are like 30th in guarding the uh, in defending wide receiver two. So that may be a good thing to look at as well. Ayuk might have a game, you know. Um, or or uh, Ray Ray McLeod because he's typically the one running off coverage and uh, mm -hmm. Ayuk gets the underneath uh, crossing routes. So maybe Ray Ray McLeod, man. Yeah, or even Jawan. Third, yeah. in, third in Jawan. Yeah. yeah, I heard uh, – Outside of who was it? Outside of Debo, Juwan Jennings has the most separation on uh, from coverage on the 49ers and outside the 49ers. Of Debo, Debo yeah. has separation. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. I think it's like four and a half yards. I thought that was Ayuk. Well, earlier in the year, I remember it was Ayuk. Debo must have changed that up. That that's surprising well, to me because a lot of people complain about Debo separation. Yeah, exactly. And um, I guess Ayuk is getting played by number one corners week in and week out. And so that's why they're saying that he has uh, less separation typically. Well, I already predict a big game from Debo. So if they're going to cover Ayuk with their number one corner, which is what I would probably do. Yeah. Um, Debo, they look for Debo to go off. I already think he's going to have a big game. So if that's the case, I, I would imagine Debo is going to have a hell of a game. Um, at 49ers Crush asks, how do you get the defensive line back to being dominant? Boza has slowed way down the last three games. The line being not as dominant as hurt the back end, has hurt the back end, has hurt the DBs. So how do you how do you get the defensive line back to being dominant? Man, um, well, not playing so conservative all the time, you know, mix things up. And, uh, you know, one thing that I liked when they were, they were bringing uh, Fred Warner on a delayed blitz, you know, um, they they would have him, uh, like I said, delayed blitz, but they would uh, run, running around Nick Bosa basically uh, to go in for a blitz. Then, of course, Hafunga, Jimmy Ward are two other guys that you can mix in there. But I think part of it, too, is I feel like the 49ers are, are playing a little too much. Like uh, there's this this uh, alignment called 9339, which mm -hmm. is very susceptible to the run. Um, and I, I like the 49ers to run more like five, two where they have five defensive linemen on, on the line at once mm -hmm. and just create more pressure, man, and help the back end a little more. And you're helping the defensive line a little more as well. Um, taking a little bit off of, uh, Nick Bosa, of course. So of course, more blitzes. Um, I have the, the, um, what do you call it? The coverage splits right in front of me too. And the 49ers, 31% of the time they're playing cover four, um, uh, 23% of the time they're playing cover three. So that's pretty damn conservative. That's, uh, over, that's almost 60%, uh, cover three, cover four, uh, cover zero, which is an all out blitz of course is 
0.7% of the time. Mm. Yeah, they're <laughs> so very conservative. Yeah. I would like I would like to see that go up to at least 1.2%. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I asked I yeah, I asked um, Mariah the same thing, you know, somebody asked in the questions um would we like to see more blitz packages from D'Amico early? And Dak does do well against the blitz. He actually does better under pressure. But I still, at least from a fan standpoint, I love to see blitz packages. And we don't really see a lot of it from D'Amico. Yeah. He seems, he's basically just manning up and, and telling his guys to beat the guy in front of him. Um, what do you think? Would you like to see more blitz packages from the 49ers? Oh, hell yeah, man. And not only that, I want to see Drake Jackson active on game day. Yeah. That dude, add that dude to the rotation. I don't understand why Tevin Coleman was active on game day, but Drake Jackson wasn't. When you want to create more pressure, what the hell is Tevin Col Coleman doing? I mean, right. much love to him, man. Uh, nothing but respect for him, but really, what what is he contributing? We got all the running backs in the world that we need already. Um, we need more defensive linemen to keep the other guys fresh. Uh you know, like Javon, Javon Kinlaw only plays so many snaps as well, and he's active on game day. Yeah. So there's somebody already uh, taking reps on the D-line and D lineman outside of Javon Kinlaw there to help him out with his rotation. Um, I think Drake Jackson would help contain the edge very well, especially with Dak Prescott being mobile. Um Drake Jackson is very good at contain. I understand that people want to talk about his liability and uh, run stop, but it, it's more about quarterback containing this game, I think, than uh, – Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think I want to knock out these two questions because of the okay. same. And then I got uh, – Los, Los, give me a, a couple of seconds here with Wolf. He was uh, – he had to jump on a little late as well. Um, but – WV Niner guy asks, what's the key other than Bosa for creating pass rush on Dak? And then a similar question, Goro1680 asks, what did Seattle do to keep Bosa quiet? So they're kind of very similar, and we're kind of already talking about it. What did you see from Seattle? Why was Bosa uh, held a little quieter than we expected? I mean, um, part of it is what we're talking about. The mm -hmm. 49ers don't blitz enough. It's kind of stale. Yeah. Um, I think they're playing super conservatively, especially since it started out being such a, a close game. They didn't want to risk too much and put too much on the offense. A, a young quarter quarterback, first time in the playoffs with Brock Purdy. So, you know, they're typically just rushing for um, not only that, Bosa is always getting double teamed. Um, I think if he had more help on um, the rest of the D line, you know, a little bit more difference making on the opposite side of him that it would help him out to have more production. He would have broken that record this year uh, for the 49ers, maybe even, uh, what's his name, um, Strahan, mm -hmm. Strahan's record. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, man, they, they just need to bring more blitz packages and help him out. Not only that, everybody contain, uh, play disciplined football on the defensive line. Uh, don't get out of your gaps. You got to have gaps discipline. Don't be giving uh, Dak Prescott too many lanes to – to not only convert third downs uh, with his feet, but that'll get the defensive line gassed even more in the defense overall. If, if you can get off the field as quick as possible, that's going to bode well for the defense. Yeah, I mean, I, I save these questions for you, man, because I know you play ball in college and uh, uh, wanted to get your takes on it, man. So I appreciate that. What do you have going on on your channel? Um, nothing exactly planned yet outside of, I, I know I have a Friday show with, uh, 49ers first takes, but I'll just be posting, um, probably today I'll probably do a live stream, but if not, then tomorrow, um, everybody could find me at Niner gang Wolfcast as it is on the screen, two words. And, uh, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. Looking forward to this game. Wolf, man. Great job as always. I appreciate you coming on. Make sure you guys go find uh Wolf's channel and subscribe to him thanks buddy man i appreciate it maybe uh hopefully we'll see you next week all right yeah hell yeah all right, cool. all right, bro. right on, we'll see you next thanks week as buddy. always take care bro Later. all right all right cool man great job uh by wolf as always